Welcome to the Soul Align Podcast. This is Dr. Michelle Kraft. I'm so happy you joined me today. Here you'll find stories of magic, miracles, and soul. Pure, loving downloads that may be just for you at just the right time you need to hear them. May these stories and meditations awaken you to your own brilliance. May they remind you that you matter. Yes, you, your life, your thoughts, and your experiences. The more calm, clear, and connected we all are, the more magic and miracles we can create together. Okay, so enjoy. From my heart to yours, here we go. Have you ever had an exchange with someone that couldn't be explained? A deep connection in a moment. Maybe even a promise, spoken or unspoken. I remember when my sister was diagnosed with cancer and we knew that she only had a certain amount of time left here on the planet. Having that phone call with her, we had our daily phone calls every day and she shared the news with me and finding out that she was going to be leaving the planet in a matter of weeks or months and making a decision in that moment to go to her. And I remember having that conversation with her and what it felt like. And she shared that she wanted me to come visit and she didn't want me to leave my family. That's the kind of person she was. She's like, no, wait till later. Just wait till later. And then the meaning of what she was saying sunk in and I burst out laughing and crying at the same time and said, I'm not waiting till later. There's no later. I'm coming now. I'm coming to you. I can't wait to get to you. And I'm on my way, and I made my plans to go and visit her and travel by myself to go spend as much time with her as possible and see her immediately. And we went from having our daily phone calls, hello, to our being in person together. We had this thing, the two of us together. Her husband would say (laughs) that when we got together, we made sounds that only dogs could hear (laughs) because we would just laugh so hard and get to such high states of that connection of souls, of soul sisters. I remembering traveling to see her and um, that it was raining where I was going to see her. They were in Portland, Oregon, and it was raining and it never snowed there, never did anything but rain. Like 365 days of rain. The weather people basically get paid to just come up with different words, 365 different ways to describe rain. So I remember traveling there and it was raining when I arrived and seeing her for the first time in person and being able to sink in and tune in with her and where she was at and be with her in that present space of this new information of this chapter of her life sitting with her quietly while she would doze in her chair or making meals for her, talking about all kinds of things and our children and her books and her things in her life and the people that were reaching out to her and contacting her and all the love that was pouring into her and the gifts that arrived at the door daily daily and in the mail through email. This is a really special time to be with her and to be able to be right there next to her witnessing her, loving her fully, and experiencing her in this place. Attuning to her in a way that was new and different and felt like it was going to end soon. So there was also a deep sadness online, coming online more and more every day, and learning how to be with that and also be fully present for someone in their life in the moment. So we spent our time together and we watched lots of funny movies and ate delicious foods and all the things, all of the things that we could do together there in her room at her house. I traveled home and a few weeks went by and then it was time to return to her and I made my way back to Portland, Oregon and it was raining again. It just seemed to rain all the time. And nothing but rain, right? No snow. <laughs> Sometimes some sunny days, but just mostly rain. And I remember that piece of it and the feeling of it coming to the coziness of her home. And one of the reasons why she had chosen to move there was for that beautiful feeling of being held by the different elements 
And so this time as I arrived, I was taken to hospice where she had been moved into hospice. And I arrived in her room and felt the presence of the physical and the non-physical online of her. Her beautiful, radiant face, how graceful she was laying in her bed and immediately took up position in the chair next to her bedside where we would sit quietly or chat quietly about things, tend to her and be present with her in a space that calls in a much different space between the space, space between the words, space between the thoughts, space between the actions where things slow way down. I remember sitting with her, noticing that every single moment mattered and the noises around me or the people coming and going and the family members or the TV on and how how just nonsensical it seemed and distracting and unimportant as the background began to fade. And the only thing that mattered was every minute that I spent with her and that we were together. She was my person and I was her person on the planet. And we would sit together for hours and days in that space while I was with her, chat about all different kinds of things. I remember she had shown some concern and we had a conversation about making a blanket for my daughter. She was so generous. She loved to give people gifts. She had created this amazing blanket for my son when he was born and specially hand-picked the material for the front and back of it. It has these little frogs on it. It's so cute. He sleeps with it to this day at the end of his bed. And he's a big, big kid now. Something that was made specially for him with love by his auntie. And it really meant a lot. And I remember her waking, coming to in one moment and saying, we need to take care of Anulani's blanket. You know, what about Anulani's blanket? So I asked her, I said, well, what would you like to have on the blanket? How would you make it? And she was dozing in and out. And she came to at one point and said, dragonflies. I would like dragonflies on her blanket. And she went back to sleep. So I made note of that, dragonflies. Mm, what an amazing, beautiful symbol, an image to have on her niece's blanket forevermore for her to remember her auntie by and how much she is loved and held through everything in every part of her life, especially while she's sleeping. We spent some more time together and it got quieter and quieter. I remember one of the evenings They came in to take her dinner order, even though she wasn't really eating much at this point, mostly sitting and resting and dozing in and out. And they were serving salmon that night. And I remember she came to and got really excited and said, oh, 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 salmon, that is my sister's favorite meal. Can you please bring one for her too? And so they proceeded to bring in two meals one for her and one for me, which I sat on my lap and started to eat, not really feeling like eating, but also feeling that complete joy and generosity and that moment of sharing food with her. And I started to eat the salmon, just thinking of the times that we've had so many meals together. And then I noticed that she really wasn't eating too much of hers, but she had a few bites and we shared a meal together and it was amazing and to watch her in her element just being so radiant and generous and kind and funny and um, sweet, right? How sweet is that? And that moment where every moment matters. All of those little moments matter and they all add up. The next morning, it was real quiet in there and it was getting quieter and my sister and I had a moment where I locked eyes with her And I just knew, and I locked eyes with her, and no words were spoken. And in the space between us, on a soul realm, we had an entire conversation. And I was saying with my eyes, I'm so sorry. I'm going to miss you so much. How am I going to speak to you? I know this is the last time. This is the last time I'm going to see you. Speaking through the field to her, 
locked eyes, the rest of the sounds in the room fading to nothing. She slowly began to nod her head at me, up and down, so perfectly, sweetly, so powerfully in that moment, without a word between us, nodded her head, gently closed and opened her eyes. And in that look, there was some kind of a promise between us, something anchored deep in the soul field around us, unwavering, true, and full of love, a deep, deep, deep soul connection that goes beyond this physical plane. That was my last few moments with her, and I made my way to the airport and my way home to my family, and a few days later, my sister passed away. In the moment that she passed away, a wind blew across the room through the curtains, moving the curtains. This beautiful wind came into the room and blew around the room. And outside the windows, it began to snow. And the wind blew gently across her radiant face forevermore. I took the phone call a while later that she had left the planet and in such grace and beauty with the elements that she loved, she had made it snow. And I took the phone call driving in my car with the windows down. The wind blew across my face with the promise of a soul connection forever. This is Dr. Michelle Kraft. I hope you're uplifted, opened, and transformed in some way today. Remember, when you are aligned with soul, anything is possible. Make sure to subscribe so you know when all new stories are released and give five stars to show you love them. You can connect with me at soulalign.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Until the next time, to be continued. Aloha.